You know why you're on trial here? You must be really thrilled this film is finally getting out. Uh, it's been a long time coming for you, this project. I, I am thrilled. And who would have thought that uh, it, it, a, after 14 years, it's coming out at exactly the moment uh, you would want to come out. I sure hope that there isn't a moment in the future that would make it even more relevant. Uh, it seems to be coming out at exactly the right time. Interesting, isn't it? When you think you look back on that and then you think what, how it is such perfect timing. It's just... It started 14 years ago uh, with Steven Spielberg saying, uh, let's do a movie about the, the Chicago riot and the trial. Um, and every year after that, there was a reason uh, uh, we couldn't make it, uh, but we did make it. Uh, and we thought it was relevant last winter when we were shooting it, we didn't need the film to become more relevant, but in shocking and chilling ways it has. We want to underscore again that we're coming to Chicago peacefully, but whether we're given permits or not, we're coming. We're going to Chicago to protest the Vietnam War. And there's no place to be right now, but in it. When I read the script, I was attached from, from about two years ago and I just found it so thrilling and intriguing and funny and sort of and emotional that I couldn't understand why it wasn't getting made and um, now it's when it did get made and well, even since I was attached it fell through several times um, but since we've made it it's sort of eerie how relevant it's become I mean what we saw happen I'm um, seeing happen with the Black Lives Matter movement this summer is obviously its own uprising rooted in systemic racism, but there are so many mirroring images to what took place in 68. What they were protesting was obviously the Vietnam War, but there was also civil rights. There was the, you know, the following year, there were the Stonewall riots, there was the women's rights movement, and there was a flu pandemic in 68, 69. There was a former vice president running for president. There, there were all of these things. And, and, it, and in some ways, what I hope that there's a sort of urgency to the film that reminds us that in some ways we've evolved and in others that we haven't and that we can hopefully look back to our history and, and, and remind ourselves that, that things can repeat themselves. My trial's begun without my lawyer. The court assumes you are being represented by the Black Panther sitting behind you. The riots were started by the Chicago Police Department. Sustained. Nobody objected. When you researched it and looked at this story and had to get into the mindset of this judge, which is very hard to watch sometimes because the things he he does is so unbelievable that that was allowed in a court. <laughs> heinous. He was mm. a heinous man, really. And he was just like that. He, uh, there, were no, there was no redeeming quality. The temptation for every actor is to try to you know, put a little thing and say, I'm not really like this or, you know, or show you some uh, um, human side, which had Aaron written a character who was at home with his family or on his way to work or had, I would be able to do that. But this man was relentless from the beginning to the end. He knew the day he walked in that courtroom that these men were going to jail and nothing any of them could do would change his mind. At the defense table, Abby Hoffman, Jerry Rubin, Dave Dellinger, Rennie Davis, Lee Weiner, John Freund, Tom Hayden, and Bobby Seale. These defendants had a plan, and the plan was to incite a riot. I call this portion of the trial with friends like these. As a filmmaker and as a writer, I mean, you know, a trial can be very hard to write. And I mean, you've made this extremely gripping, extremely sort of edge of the Thank seat. You. How difficult was that to, to manifest? I love courtroom dramas. I, I've, ever since I was little, uh, I've loved movies, plays, books, any courtroom drama. And as a writer, uh, they a courtroom, what goes on in a courtroom sets up so perfectly for the rules of drama. Uh, the intention and obstacle is clear. The stakes are clear and the stakes are high. Uh, the, the jury is a stand-in for the audience. They know as little as the audience does, and they need to be convinced of something. Uh, so with a direct examination followed by a cross-examination, 
they're going to go back and forth the way the audience would, or the audience is going to go back and forth and forth the, uh, 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 the way they would. This is an incredible ensemble of actors. How did that feel? It was it was a joy. I kind of describe it in musical terms. It was like you had sort of, it was like classical music meets punk rock, meets jazz, meets something kind of poppy. It was like this sort of every day. I mean, getting to watch Mark Rylance slog it out with Frank Langella was watching Feather and Nadal. People like Sasha I'd worked with before and found hilarious. Jeremy Strong had been a friend for many years. Um, you know, Yaya Abdul Mateen, I was and, and was someone whose work I just really admired. So it was, and it's also rare that you do actually on a film set get to all be there together for a long period of time. And it felt special and unique. <laughs> How much is it worth to you? What's your price? To call off the revolution? My life. Open your eyes, cause a new day is dawning. The new day is 